in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our colic prayer for today, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now Jacob will read the first reading for us. Our first reading is found in Jeremiah chapter 31. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ, King, King of eternal glory. glory. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you. See, O oh Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now, my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour, no, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o, Christ. o Christ. May I speak in the name of God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer. Amen. Next month, hopefully, Peter and I will celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary. Yes, I know we don't look that old. At least with lockdown, there has been less opportunity for marital confusion over train trains. I'll be on the 1832, said he, and I'm dutifully parked at York Station four minutes early only to discover that the train leaves Darlington at 18.32. Thank goodness he wasn't coming from Aberdeen. Our train's at 10.04. I've learned to ask, is that from New Street or Northfield? It does make a difference. Today's Bible readings are like trains. They take us back to our departure point, remind us of the journey so far, and look ahead to the next stops on the route and the final destination. Or is it? <laughs> For Christians, our departure point is found in the Old Testament, especially in the covenants or the promises of God. On the first Sunday of Lent, we stopped off with Noah and encountered Covenant One, the rainbow and God's promise, 
the waters will never again become a flood and destroy the earth. Lent 2, Covenant 2, to Abraham. You will be the ancestor of a multitude of nations and therefore one of our forebears. Lent 3, and we've traveled up a steep gradient for the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20. The commandments which the people quickly disobeyed, especially the one about graven images, and there needed to be a reissue of them, a bit like leaves on the line timetables. So Exodus 34 we're up to now, the Lord says to Moses, I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people, I will perform marvels such as never been performed before, and all the people will see the work of the Lord. Then last week, feels longer ago, Lent 4, and we heard of one such marvel, the serpent on the pole, which brought healing to the people who'd been disobedient yet again. Today, our Old Testament reading is about a thousand years later. The Hebrew people, having made it to what they thought was their destination and their destiny, the promised land, have now gone on forced tour into exile. The Israelites of the Northern Kingdom have been stuck for 200 years already in a siding called Assyria. And now Jerusalem, the southern kingdom, has fallen and the people of Judah have just been shunted off to Babylonia. And it is into this situation that over the metaphorical Tannoy, we hear the prophet of Jeremiah proclaiming a new covenant. Not laws written on stone like the Ten Commandments, but this is a covenant to be written on the hearts. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. Written on their hearts. What touches our hearts? For most of us, it isn't the small print of laws or even railway timetables. And I have to admit that our marriage has coped with regular calls of old timetables. So not laws, but relationships. And here is God promising ongoing relationship into a situation of exile, which has come about through the people ignoring the prophets and turning away from God. Now, Jeremiah, having been a prophet of doom, brings words of hope, words of a new covenant. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. They shall all know me, says the Lord, from the least to the greatest. Relationship is at the heart of this covenant. But is it still all words? just words. We need to see it, hear it, touch it, take it to heart. So no wonder at the beginning of our gospel reading, we hear Greeks who are wanting to see, hear, maybe even touch this Jesus they've heard rumours of. They approach Philip, the disciple with a Greek name, who goes to Andrew and together they take them to Jesus who starts talking about seeds, losing life and serving others and being saved from this hour. It's a very dense paragraph. Here, St. John jumps on the express train, whereas Matthew, Mark and Luke prefer the stoppers. In less than a paragraph, John covers one, the heart of the conversation we heard between Jesus and Peter on Lent 2 about picking up one's cross and following Jesus and without even mentioning the cross. Two, 
two occasions where Mark has Jesus speaking about the servant of others. And then thirdly, John covers the struggle in Gethsemane in half a verse. Father, save me from this hour. But by now, John's destination is becoming clear. For we're on the Good Friday special hurtling towards Calvary, the cross. And this time it isn't a metaphorical voice over the tannoy. It's a voice from heaven in response to Jesus's request. Father, glorify your name. And they hear, I have glorified it. Remember the voice at Jesus's baptism and the transfiguration? This is my son. And now, and I will glorify it again. Yes, and Jesus goes on, when I am lifted up and I will draw all people to me, Greeks as well as Jews, and the ruler of the world will be defeated, Satan driven out. Remember that old spiritual, this train is bound for glory, it may seem a bit odd to us that John equates glory with Calvary. Surely glory is at the resurrection and the ascension. But here Jesus' answer to the request of the Greeks to see him is to point to the cross. And this is where we too see Jesus and perceive his full glory. Over the years, I found it so important to take the slow train through Holy Week. This is why I've been glad to provide in our packs and on our website, a booklet which invites us to travel with Jesus his final days, to get off at each station and lay down our palm crosses in a different place each day and stop and pray, but especially so on Good Friday. For here I discover in my heart for myself that the covenant made with Jeremiah is still true today. I will be their God and they will be my people from least to greatest. You are my God and I am one of your people. And then on Easter Sunday it really is glory on glory. The train has burst through the buffers and there's no stopping it ever. So Come on, you can jump on board this tra train, even in lockdown. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to the Father who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to give us life. Almighty God, 
our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Everlasting God, your Son chose 12 disciples to work together to spread the good news of the gospel to the whole world. Help us to support and encourage our ministry team here in Northfield as we all work together to share our faith with all those we meet in person or online. May we delight in sharing in each other's spiritual gifts, enabling each one of us to make a contribution, however small, as we seek to do your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Creator God, we pray for peace in the world. May those living in areas of conflict find peace and reconciliation. We pray for all those who offer themselves to take up leadership roles. May they uphold what is right and good for all they serve. As we continue to seek a pathway out of the pandemic, we ask you to give wisdom to those who bear the load of making decisions which have widespread consequences. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father God, we thank you for all those who help our communities to function, be it through their work, volunteering or neighbourliness. Bless and strengthen those who are working to bring healing, health and comfort to those in need. Your son Jesus Christ healed the lame with a touch and raised the dead with a word. Hear our prayers today for all those who are laid low by sorrow and illness or by fear and weakness. Breathe new life into them as we hold them before you in prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Eternal Father, we thank you that by your faithfulness, we are born to new and living hope in a future where love will never be terminated and life will never end. May we always trust in you as we pray for those who have departed this earthly life. We pray for all who are bereaved and ask you to give them comfort. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord gracious. gracious. Loving God, as we go forth from this time of worship, help us to remember but you do infinitely more for us than we can ask or imagine. Hear our prayers for all your creation and gather us in the embrace of your abundant life and abundant and life-giving spirit. And standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in, in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. 
the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. So we offer each other a sign of peace in whichever way we're accustomed. And now I am preparing the table, the bread and wine. Tempting to pour just a little wine into the chalice. As I keep saying, the tough bit is a tiny drop of water. That was about three drops. With this bread that we bring, we shall, we shall remember, remember Jesus. Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall we remember, remember Jesus. Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall we remember, remember Jesus. Jesus. The Lord is here. His spirit, his spirit is, with, is us. with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift we them lift to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right yes. to give thanks yes. and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks holy father almighty and eternal god through jesus christ our lord for as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty the power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of christ crucified he is the victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain, who lives forever, our advocate in heaven, to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting as worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of lawrence and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are many. We are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were empty, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink, either physically or spiritually, in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And so now as I eat the bread and drink the wine, I do it on behalf of all of us as we share spiritually in this communion. And so we come to the seasonal post-communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that, we, that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And together we say, the post-communion prayer at, top, at the top of page 14. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the blessing. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.